In the previous video, we talked about onlining and conforming your media. In this video, we're going to talk about how to organize that media you brought in. It's going to set this back to non-wipe here and make sure we're viewing. I guess we can just keep viewing our reference track. That's fine. So we're going to take another trip back over to the project panel. I'm going to full screen this. In the interface video, we talked about these icons here, the sorting through the lists alphabetically or ascending descending order. What we haven't talked about yet is the searchability within this project window. And that can be found right up here in the search bar. So if I click and hold on this magnifying glass, it's going to show me a few of the options of how I can filter through my searches. It's going to have the filter, flag, match all criteria, match any criteria, and include any metadata. Search through that as well. So by default, if I look for something, let's say an MOV file in here, I type in MOV, it's going to show me only the MOV files that are contained within my project. If I type in, let's say, DPX, show me the DPX files. Now if I were to type in MOV only, it's going to show me my MOV because it contains the word MOV in it. But if I were to change this to match all criteria so that it has to match MOV and the word only, it's going to disappear because that file does not contain the words MOV only. If we go back to match any criteria, we'll be able to see that. Another option we have is to use the flags. So I can flag this. I want to see MOV only. It's going to flag everything else that's not or that doesn't contain the words MOV only in either its name or metadata. And it's also going to make the information bar red. So I can see that this is my only clip in here that either contains MOV or MOV only in it. Change this back to filter and just clear that out. If I were to type in like say clip name, it's going to show me everything because all my clips in the metadata have the clip name key for it. If I were to take off or exclude them, include metadata, we won't see anything because now it's not reading the metadata. And clear that out. So that's one way to kind of search through your bin folders a little bit quicker and be able to filter through it. Another way you might want to be organized and that you can search and filter through is if we were to color our bin items or our project items or our timeline items. And the way we go about that can be done a couple different ways. Starting off with our project items over here, these can all be colored. You can see they already have a default color assigned to them and the default color can be set in preferences. So let me go to preferences either under edit preferences or shift S on the keyboard. And if I go to project items, we'll see the default colors for our project. You can change these, click on that and select a color if you like. You can even select certain file types that come in here to automatically color those. So I go in here and add DPX and we'll double click the color to select a color for it. We'll maybe make them pink. And then we'll also add one in from the MOV file. So we can make some MOV. So anytime we bring these file types in, they're going to automatically be colored these colors for us. This is going to visually help us stay organized because we will see at a glance all our particular file types. If for any reason you don't like the default color, you can override that by selecting the clip, right clicking, go to color. You can use the color picker to pick a new color. Or if I go color this one, you can select from recent colors. You can select multiple at once as well. And we'll color those. And we'll color these ones over here blue as well. That so now when we go to sort by color, see it groups all the colors together for us. You can clear these out to the default settings by selecting whatever ones you want to clear out, go back to color and clear color, and they'll set it back to its default colors for you. You can also organize your project items the same way by color. So if I select, say this folder, once again, select color, maybe choose from one of these existing colors and see how that's colored there for us now. So this gets really handy when you have multiple folders, different stuff contained within the folders, rather than just seeing all one solid color, you're able to kind of organize our color code and be able to see at a glance exactly what you're looking at. But it regraded since that's a little different there. Make that one blue. 
It's like so. When I pop out of this project's window, you'll notice that it also colored the shots for me in my timeline based off of the color scheme that I had set up and my preferences. So anything that was DPX was colored pink. Anything that was MOV was colored the blue. And you can also notice that in our spreadsheet as well. In spreadsheet, you can organize that by clicking on any of these column headers. And I'll organize by that. We'll go to color, organize by color. Okay, so that's two ways of organizing your media, whether it's through color coding or through searching through the file names, metadata, or whatnot. Another thing we can do with our footage or our clips here is set poster frames. Now, the poster frames were mentioned in project settings video. We go up to project edit settings. We can look here by default when we bring in new footage, it's always going to set the first frame as the poster frame. As I mentioned before, maybe the first frame you're bringing in is a slate. You don't want to see a slate. You want to be able to see what's contained within there. So you can right click on any of these. You can select multiple, right click, choose set poster frame, set middle, it'll set it to the middle frame. You want to change that to a custom frame number You can do a frame offset. Let's see, right, do maybe 10. Hopefully there's at least 10 frames in each one. There we go. Or if you're viewing a clip such as this one, we don't want to just see the floor. You know, get some better context here. We like this shot right here in the viewer. We can right click and set this as the poster frame. So we go back over to our project spin. We'll see now that it's set as a poster frame for that shot. So that's three ways now of organizing your media, whether it's poster frames, color coding, or using the search filter to kind of find what you're looking for. Those are definitely some good ways to organize the media in your project. In the next video, I'm going to talk about Nuke Studio's powerful tagging system that's going to allow you to not only further organize your shots and footage, but also allow you to easily search through the shots, the footage, the sequences, the track items, whatever it might be. 